I hereby seed the other half of this room to the Mandalorian. They need a home. Then it'd be pretty cool to just have them walking around, so. What's up, everybody? I'm back with, uh, obviously, more Mandalorian recapping. This is season three, episode five. Um, I'm a blind film critic, so this week's episode brought a lot of action, uh, which meant I was very grateful for the audio description. I love the little description of the lizard monkey. That was great. Uh, I had no idea what was going on there, but <laughs> until I guess there was like a little, uh, you know, now my, my, <laughs> my mind is trying to imagine what a lizard monkey would look like. I'm imagining that it looks like a monkey, but like reptilian, you know, uh, like it's just like scaly instead of furry. Um, that's where my mind went with that. But a uh, little lizard monkey in the tree that gave the Mandalorian a heads up that they were about to be ambushed. Uh, that, was, that was good, because otherwise I would not have known what was about to get ambushed. So, um, this is a bold, bold move for, uh, for Disney and the Star Wars universe and Jon Favreau to have an episode of The Mandalorian that did not lean heavily in on Baby Yoda. <laughs> we did not get a whole lot of Groku. This one was pretty much, um, you know, planet gets attacked, New Order doesn't want to help, uh, so the, the Mandalorian gets a, gets a fly on in and save the day and now they have a place to stay and they are welcomed and they don't have to like hide and they can just kind of like walk around and be themselves um yeah that was pretty much the whole point of the episode was to move them from one planet to another planet <laughs> and uh and then Bo-Katan walks both ways walk this way <laughs> So, uh, it's gonna be up to her to go find the other Mandalorian and bring them in. But, oh no, is it possible that the other Mandalorian are evil? Did they help Moth Gideon escape? Did they blow open a hole in the side of the ship and then jump in and grab Moth Gideon? Um, I don't know. We'll have to find out. Um, felt very event horizon there for me for a minute. <laughs> I feel like it's a dead ship just floating in space. And I was like, don't go in there. <laughs> it's not going to be good for you. Um, but then he, he just like, there was nothing there. It's, and uh, Yeah, so what really worked about this episode was the fact that we got... Mandalorian action, and uh, it flesh it continued to flesh out the rest of the Mandalorian. So we started seeing a little bit more characters from um, more Mandalorian. So it really is becoming the Mandalorian, as in plural. This uh, I feel like this is one of those words that is singular and plural. The Mandalorian is. The singular, what it meant, you know, just, uh, just Pedro Pascal's Din Djarin or whatever. I can't believe I have to learn a new name for him. Um, and, um, so it was singular when he was the only one, the only Mandalorian that we knew of, because people just called him, or referred to him by that, or they shortened it to Mando, but, um, now we have multiple of them, and, uh, I don't think it's Mandalorians, uh, I think it's the, I think it's Mandalorian deer, I don't know, interesting weird things that I think about while watching shows, I'm like, what's the singular and plural of Mandalorian, uh, is this, are we referring to the Mandalorian, like, as a culture, um, or 
or what? Is this like a deer thing? <laughs> um, but seeing them in action was was pretty great. Um, I'm trying to avoid saying the bad thing because I'm I really like Tim Meadows, but what the fuck? <laughs> what the? I, I'm sh I'm sure he lived out his Star Wars dreams. I'm sure that he's prob he probably grew up and really wanted to be a part of Star Wars. And um, this was his moment to live out that dream. But he's not a great actor. And his dialogue was pretty painful to listen to. So not super excited about that. It's like, I already have to sit through Katie Sackhoff and her line readings. <laughs> um, and now Tim Meadows is in as some sort of requisitions officer. I kind of felt like he had been in before. And I feel like I'd had this conversation before, but his character was so inconsequential the first time around that I was just like, uh, I hope this is a cameo. And then I think we're coming back to him and I'm like, oh my God, um, he has more dialogue. <laughs> I think it's one of those things, but yeah, um, I don't know that, I don't know that that worked for me. Um, he's a great comedic talent and I feel like there are other ways to use him, but this was not a role that had a hint of humor to it. So it was very weird. Uh, the role that they are giving... Um, I know that there's another comedic actress on the show, and the role that they're giving her actually allows her to flourish a little bit more than what they're giving Tim Meadows. So, um, I wish they'd given him something a little bit more his speed instead of this role. But, anyway, that was... I, that was probably the least the thing that I liked the least. Um, I'm still waiting for the great reveal of of why this random former uh, em, empire person matters so damn much that we had to spend an entire episode learning about her. Like uh, she better be like Darth Vader's like secret daughter, you know, like that we we never knew about. <laughs> Just. Um, I don't know, something, but you know, she keeps popping up and I'm like, who are you? Who are you? <laughs> Why are you here? Uh, anyway, um, so yeah, it was, it was a fun episode. It was fine. Um, it, it had a lot of action. Honestly, if Tim Meadows had never spoken, I'd be all about this episode. If they had gone there and there was some other guy who uh, just was like a boring requisitions officer, you know, uh, done. I would have been like, yes, this is the best Mandalorian episode of the season. And now I'm just like, uh, there's that weird Tim Meadows scene that goes on for way too long about requisitions and, and uh, is the Empire back and uh, you're out of line. I'm just trying to, oh, uh, God. <sighs> So, um, <laughs> I haven't given an episode of The Mandalorian this season yet an A, and I don't think I'm going to with this one either. <laughs> I guess I, I, I'm not on, I guess season three for me has not lived up to season one or two. Um, it's fallen short. Every episode has found, like, a reason to fall short for me. Um, and that's... That's it. Uh, it's funny that when I hear the word Corsair, the first thing that I think of is X-Men, by the way, for any other nerds out there. I heard Corsair and I was like, X-Men. <laughs> I know it means other things, but I always hear the Corsair and I immediately think the dad of Cyclops and Havoc, who has never been featured in any of the films. Um, but, you know, Marvel's got so many projects going on, maybe they could have a Star Jammers show. I don't know. Um, that'd be cool. 
side, just like a side note while we're talking about Star Wars, why not have some Star Jammers going on? Worked for Guardians of the Galaxy, could work for the X-Men franchise. Anyway, um, I think, you know, if people are enjoying these space pirates, maybe they'll enjoy it on the other end. But, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is a lot of action, and it's, it's good action, and, uh, I'm gonna be nice, and I'm just gonna pretend Tim Meadows doesn't exist, <laughs> because I do think this is the best episode of the season so far, because it did actually everything that it should have done. It's just the casting department, like, somebody owed Tim Meadows a favor, and was like, hey, hey buddy, what's up? Oh, you wanna be in a Star Wars thing? Cool. Cool, cool. Um, oh, you want dialogue? Oh, shit. Uh, where do we put you? Uh, I don't know. Nobody's gonna care if you're this requisitions officer. Oh, here's a lot of dialogue. Damn it. Uh, well, we'll see how this goes. Probably what happened. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> he's great on SNL. I love Ladies Man. Like, I think he's he's been funny in TV shows. But this is not, this was not his best. So, I won't let him drag down the episode. I I am enjoying the season enough, and this was a good episode. Ironically, uh, without Groku that much. So, if really at all. Um, nothing he did was significant enough to be described. So, he's just kind of hanging out, I guess, this episode. Anyway, so, uh, I'm going to give... The Mandalorian, season one, episode five. Season three, episode five, an A. Probably would have given season one, episode five, an A, too. But I can't remember which one that is. Um, just me stumbling over that. But anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please click subscribe. It's funny because I talk to people in real life who don't, like, understand how hard it is to get subscribers on YouTube. And they're like, oh, you're probably like, and I'm like, no. I know it's weird. It's like I'm the only blind film critic and you would think it would be easier for me to get subscribers. It's really not. There are like a thousand movie critics. <laughs> you could just trip over one. Um, YouTube just keeps suggesting new ones to me to follow. And I'm, I do the, you know, I put out good karma in the world and I follow all these other critics and I just hope some of these, some of them start following me. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, um, go to my website, macromovieguy.com, you can go to the audio description project, adp.acb.org, and it'll let you know what, uh, what has audio description where you can watch it, you can go to the adna.org, that's the adna.org, it'll let you know who is describing your favorite films and television shows like The Mandalorian, and you can go to, uh, Twitter or Instagram. You can follow me there at Mac the Movie Guy. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, <laughs> this is the way.